working right now. You know, the talent is there and it's starting to get picked up upon. Uh, but I believe we have the draft for IG versus SAG underway. So let's jump into the first game of this best of three series. So far. Well, Nyx got through and first pick Nyx, that's very standard. Um, yeah. Uh, a Nyx opener opens up a lot in your draft, but for the most part, one of the most useful things about it is it negates a lot of intimate heroes and it kind of takes them out of the game without much effort. So it's not really something you have to worry about in your drafting phase, which is one of Nyx's biggest strengths as a first phase hero. Yeah, statistically, the most likely first picks between these two teams or pick, picks and bans is Nyx Assassin, uh, Medusa, weirdly, and uh, the Centaur. Love both of these teams playing and uh, getting banned, these heroes. So still potential. I mean, I, I, I think that's uh, the meta's changed a bit over the patch. So <laughs> do we are we yeah. going to get to see JT Tidehunter? I hope so. I miss it. You know, you know, oh, I, I know it sounded like that came out of nowhere, but when I see these two <laughs> heroes like Magnus and Wyvern, like that's what in, instantly came into my mind. Like this big team fight counter initiator that can hit like all their counter initiation at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this is something like kind of, you know, put IG on the map, right? Like this kind of play style where they're able to have heroes like that and t execute team fights really well. One of the reasons why they were able to win the majors because their team fighting was amazing. Um, we also saw yesterday when they played with the Winter Wyvern too, like how they make decisions in team fights and stuff. It's just a matter of like them actually getting better drafts sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised at how many of these Chinese teams that we've been watching over the last few days have been prioritizing very heavily this first phase timber ban and letting yeah. heroes like Luna come through. And uh, we've seen this hero so often, not just in this tournament, but mm -hmm. the last two tournaments in Dota. This this hero is absurd. It's probably the it best is. carry right now. It farms too quickly. Ten the shard seconds, and the remaining. Daedalus are so broken. It lanes well. It fights well. It scales through every stage of the game. It's just very, very absurd. And just the fact that it, it got through, because... Just the fact that it got through in first phase is kind of crazy to me. I mean, you do kind of forget about heroes as as games progress in the tournament because you start to see more more different heroes. But I think Luna just sits there as the most busted hero of this patch right now, alongside Winter Wyvern. Just a lot of ease of execution, right? When you have that hero on your team and you have the confidence, like, okay, if she free farms the laning stage, she's gonna free farm throughout the mid game. She's gonna hit the item times much faster. <laughs> It just makes your drafting a lot easier too. Plus, she's good at showing up into team fights with that maxed out aura. There was a lot of arguments like people are making, oh, Glaives is better for farming or whatever. But like, it's not about farming. That's not why mm -hmm. people max out the aura. It's not about the farming speed, but it's like a combination of farming speed plus the ability to join team fights and have impact. And it's it's a very clear win condition for your team yeah, without yeah. having to worry too much about I mean, other things. Those team fights, but objectives as well, right? Like your whole team gets a little buff Five when pushing towers, remain. when taking Roshan, you know, it's noticeable for sure and helps you just do everything a little bit quicker. And that's what it all comes down to. Meanwhile, Sparkly Arrow Gaming, they've picked up the Darks here in the clockwork and IG have grabbed themselves a doom. Um, we haven't really seen much Darks here a little bit. Uh, tell, tell me a bit about this hero, guys. Well, typically Darkseer gets spanned out versus Illusion Heroes. Usually if a, a Luna or a Terra Blade comes out, the team does cover it. In the next phase, they're running out the darks here. Um, his wall of replica is just ridiculous. You really don't want illusions of Luna hitting your team. But as far as laning stage goes, she doesn't really. She's she's not one of the heroes that struggles versus darks here in lane. But if they do pair the clockwork with the darks here, that's a lot of kill potential. Yeah, there. I think why they picked it. Luna could suffer quite a bit. Plus, you got that as soon as like the ten minute mark hits, and you get the 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 tome like you can smoke up with the darks here with the iron shot hook shot like you're guaranteed kills on the luna mm -hmm. so, so the, the darks here clockwork a very strong combination clockwork excels in killing luna in the early game with hook shot because yeah he does cog himself with her but she's not strong enough at that point to, to threaten him later on in the game it becomes less of a problem especially as the team builds four staffs and things like that but so far they've they've addressed the killing luna early Dying concern with these two years so I'm For sure. The... Oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to talk about how there's not really that much to say about Doom. Like, Doom is a very, is a very strong hero against Dark Seer. You can handle Dark Seer quite easily. You just Doom him in a team fight, take him out of the game, and your Luna doesn't have to worry about him anymore. So, Mir, I have a the question thing about for Dark you. Seer, right? Okay, go ahead, yeah. dude. Uh, so, you play a lot of four, I assume, right? You, know, you say yeah. you love Earth Sphere and such. Have you ever noticed how hard it is? Like it's so like in theory, it's so simple, right? You you're a clockwork. You want to run around. You want to kill someone like a Luna. Like you're it, in, in your mind, it's so easy. But when you play in the actual game, like how much difficult it is to actually kill carry players nowadays, e even though you have like this clear kill condition. Because either one, they know how to play around it, or it, it's like they you just can't find them, or like you're running into your opponent heroes instead. Roaming in general has just gotten so much more difficult <laughs> in like the last few patches. But it's really hard even on lane to just walk up to Luna. Like you try to cut your path through the trees, right? So you can walk up to her and cog her. But you're playing against two ranged heroes who just have to have a little bit of awareness and they run away. And then later in the game, you're like, okay, I have an idea. I'm going to go find the Luna. But then the entire team is waiting there behind the Luna and the triangle. It just, it just doesn't really feel like a patch for that kind of plays. Final two picks going to be the Hoodwink for IG and the Razor for Sparkling Arrow Gaming, and that's going to round off these drafts. Guys, overall, who are we feeling has got the uh, better synergy and the better chance to take this one? Because this is looking very, uh, I think, aggressive from Sparkling Arrow Gaming. It is. It is. They, they've they got some, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't call them traditional hard carries with the Razor and the Magnus, but they got a pretty solid idea. They want to be able to team fight. They all they want to come online a lot faster. But the problem is, I think this Luna is going to farm too fast. I think she's going to come online at the same time that Sparkling Arrow Gaming is going to feel strong. Mm -hmm. And IG, as long as JT doesn't have an awful game, IG's got this. I right. agree with that. I'll agree with that. And, and typically when you think about Darkseer, you know that he has this really strong mid-game timing that he hits with his team, but that's not the timing they're looking for when they're playing against Luna. They want to go a little bit earlier, and Darkseer's game will suffer as a result of them just going before he's ready. I think IG's draft is easier to play. I think they got this. Yeah, and I think um, for me, the Razor and the Clockwork are kind of... Like, it feels like they should be good together, but what ends up happening is that you build four staffs anyway to deal with the clockwork cogs, and then you've got a great answer to the razor as well. It makes the four staff really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. And sure. overall, I just prefer IG's draft. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going IG as well. That's three for IG. Not looking good for Sparking Arrow Gaming, but hopefully they can prove us wrong as we throw it over to our casters for this game. We've got a miracle of the Chinese Dota casting scene. It's B Cop, and a miracle he's still getting hired. It's Mo Farah. <laughs> I totally, I totally agree. It's what was that really about? Is a miracle. I was like, oh, I was stretching. I was getting ready to cast, and this guy just throws <laughs> me under the bus. What's oh, that about? Uh, Unbelievable. You know, it's. Uh, I wouldn't say it's deserved, but I'd be lying. So you know, <laughs> I'm excited for this one. A little emo void spirit action should be fun. I've actually thought Kaka was gonna play the Nyx Assassin. And I was getting hyped for that as well, but then they last picked the uh, Hoodwink. It's another contender in the who could play the best four position Hoodwink in China. So, I'm interested to see it. This pleases me. I'm still no upset, way. give me a second. Alright, no, take your time, get yourself I, I, together. I, just, um, I can give you all game if you want. Me. Yeah. Just, I don't know. It, it, it's rough, it's uh, rough realizing. How right Nomad was. Um, yeah, so fly fly on this Luna. Trying to buy some time here for you, Mo. I'm doing my best. Holding on some to some great gold cosmetics. <laughs> it's really boring when there's no punch in the game, but they don't fight at level Battle one. Begins. Yeah, they smoke it's... through on Sparking Arrow Gaming, and they uh, got a ward down on the cliff. But other than that, it wasn't first blood into another kill uh, before the horn. So, how are these lanes going to go? We have Wyvern Mag against the um, against the Luna Hoodwink lane. Okay. So they want to put the Doom against the Dark Seer. Obviously, you can devour the creep that the uh, the Doom is Iron Shield. Sorry, that the Dark Seer is Iron Shield. 
be interesting to see whether the Darks are using the Iron Shell on the um, enemy creeps instead. Hmm. Wouldn't make more sense, right? Yeah. Or you can just, you know, like you see, he's using it on the clockwork instead as well. I don't mind this. As, as, I don't know if Nyx has taken mana burn at level one or not. No, he hasn't. Okay. Sometimes I see when these Nyx fives um, play against Darks here, they take mana burn. I think it's different against clock though, because you have to be constantly basically like scared all the time. Um, and this lane for IG, not going well so far. With the um, Iron Shell not pushing out the wave because he's used it on the clockwork, the Darks is holding the wave really well. Ends up being a four clock or two for a white horse. Very used to seeing that five position clockwork, but it's XCJ who's on the winter wyvern. Yeah, four clock's definitely still a thing sometimes. Yeah. I think this game especially, it's it's fine to give it the farm priority. Up against like, you know, the panel we're talking about versus the Luna. I think versus the Nyx as well, especially. It feels really good. Get on top of these heroes early on. Or at least try to land those hooks, get in, hook shot through. We'll see what Kaka could do. We've seen a lot of control come from these hoodwinks early on that makes such a difference in these games. But up against this Magnus Winter Wyvern, how much are you expecting from the hoodwink in this lane? Yeah, it's quite difficult, isn't it? I'd be interested to see whether Magnus cuts down that tree just to the above him right now as well, to stop the uh, bushrocks coming through from the, uh, from the hoodwink potentially. Yeah, there you go. Feels kind of similar to when you'd see uh, a tree in, in somebody's lane and they cut down all the trees pre-horn. Yeah. To like make <laughs> oh, sure so that annoying. tree couldn't really do anything in lane. We should say as well the famous uh, emo void spirit that we saw so much at the in the major final against CG. Uh, the, the famous question mark game as well. And of course, he's got the uh, the new ultra rare cosmetic. Of course, he's also laning against the razor though, which uh, which isn't very fun. Look at that; it looks so good. It does look good. I'm surprised you're saying it looks so good. I, I you're not really a cosmetic person. No, I'm not. But there are some cosmetics that just they they're just good, you know. Like you have to respect them. JT, oh. you know, a lot of trouble. Battery assault and the cogs first blood there. For White Horse. Do they just start cutting the wave now? I think they do. Yeah. And with a team like IG who are kind of, I would say, slumping a little bit, and SAG with a team full of guys with experience, this could certainly turn into a pretty close matchup. Maybe not one that looked like it should be so close on paper when you think about where the two teams have gone throughout the DPC year. But SAG... They've got themselves a couple of experienced veterans that could lead this team to potential victory. Yeah, they're a good team. You know, don't don't sleep on these um the other teams in this tournament that aren't necessarily the top of the you know, top of the tier list. Cream of the crop. Yeah. I guess the they put in an okay performance last series. Yeah. But the punch is just unbeatable. Can't blame them. Just don't look at the other games in that series. <laughs> yeah. And I said it in the last SAG uh, series. It's just me repeating myself as Ollie oh, goes Ollie down can. to the iron shell of Sun Goku, which was on White Horse. But you've got ZYD, you've got XCJ, even Sun Goku, the artist formerly known as June. He's there to really give you that experience. And I'm, I'm wondering who the shot caller is on this team. That's the one thing I'm I'm interested to hear. Wish I had that information. I wonder if it's MS or if it's ZYD. Who knows, honestly? It, it, it's yeah, like you say, it's really difficult to to know. Sun Goku scorched and Earth. Chased, scorched Earth doing a lot of damage. This might actually end up turning into both if they're not JT. too careful. There's one JT goes down. Ollie maybe looking to trade. Get the impale, he'll land it and get the kill onto the Darkseer. That was so good for the Knicks. He's level four at four and a half minutes into the game. That's uh, that's pretty wild for him. I mean, the the lane obviously top hasn't gone that well for them, considering this is the lane they chose as well, right? 
Yeah, they swap for this. Denied. And uh, the other thing is this Razor's doing really well made against the Void Spirit. Obviously, Void Spirit, it's impossible to win the lane against the Razor, but you don't jungle very efficiently like someone else who could just leave the lane against the Razor. Oh, Wyvern. XCJ in trouble. One more shot needed. And there it is for Fly Fly. And going back to speaking about mid, it's, um, you know, it is another matchup against a very strong big name in mid, in emo. And ZYD is someone people haven't seen for a while. He hasn't played on a team in a oh, good nice long time. Spells. Good two man impale coming through from Ollie, but it won't keep JT alive. It's well placed, but not enough. Yeah, th this lane's so scary at this point when the clock's level 3, the darks is level 5. You have such a huge amount of damage. Nice vac into cogs as well. Uh, combo. You love to see it. And yeah, I was going to say about the voice Spirit 4 as well, that, you know, the lane's not great, but at least you can make rotations and things afterwards, right? Emo forced to use that astral step out and ZYD really taking the, the top part of this matchup. Bushwhack, skewer from MS. Flyfly, though, gonna get one. ZYD comes to rotate in, goes after Kaka, and will get a kill onto the Hoodwink. Okay, rotation there from ZYD to get his first kill on the board. Yeah, good rotation from the, like, a good play from the Luna, though, to just TP out. Realizes there are no stuns. So, it's, it's a good rotation by the racer, but, you know, you only kill the, the Hoodwink, and you still lose your mag, right? It's still pretty good for IG overall. Yeah, the voice is able to have some time mid before the Razor gets back as well. Sorry, I keep harping on. I just want to go back to that point out with ZYD. You know, he played for You Know Who, which was kind of just a a put together squad with a couple of guys who have been uh, uh, been in big situations before. He played with Blink. He played with Ice Ice. Um, but you know, then he was playing with Serenity, who after that Ti really didn't do much. So it, it's good to see him have a chance here up against big mid players. And now a two-man stun coming in from Ollie. I'm talking about ZYD trying to pump him up. And can he get anything out of this? They get the kill on Ollie. They look over at Kaka. It might just be three. Emo goes down. Kaka turns for a second. The cold embrace is there to save ZYD. A two for nil in favor of SAG. IG still looking real shaky. Yeah, you, you can't sleep on this eye of the storm in the early game with it reducing armor as well. Like, in these like longer engagements, it's so difficult to uh, to fight at this like level six mark because the eye that's gone really chips away at you. JT might be in trouble again. Yeah, he's really struggling against this combination. And like you said, this is the lane matchups they chose. I think it, it comes back to those first, uh, that first death though on the Doom, really sets him back. You know, if the first one, if he doesn't die the first time, maybe it doesn't snowball quite so much out of control. But this top lane, yeah, really getting quite crazy. I mean, Doom's net worth is still okay, but you expect him to be doing a bit better. Oh, not again! Oh boy! Ollie almost dies to the, uh, to the Razor. Doom used on the Razor. Uh, we'll see if JT can catch up. Fly Fly TPing a little bit far back, but into the trees goes ZYD. Uh, I'm not sure he'll have the jukes here. And yeah, Fly Fly is in. Kaka takes the kill, though, with an acorn shot. Agents of the void. Oh, they want Son Goku. And they'll find him. Emo. Getting that kill and finally moving off the mid to find himself his first kill on the board. Yeah, that's a really huge kill for him because he really needed that gold boost as well. He's starting to fall behind a lot. And all of a sudden, oh, XCJ. Oh, well. He's dead to Emo. That ends up being a double kill for him. You said he liked the gold injection of one kill. Well, how does two do it for you? Yeah, and where this Razor had been absolutely destroying him in net worth, all of a sudden they're like basically neck and neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because the Razor dies top and the Emo voice rate gets two kills. And we're going to start to see the power of the Luna soon, where she just starts to flash farm. Uh, I like the, the panel we're talking about how you, you know, people like this Darkseer pick against the um, Illusions, right? Obviously, uh, it, it has its merits, um, but I think they let it through on purpose. You know, if he was saying about how 
teams often ban it out a lot against when they have like the Lunas and the TVs and stuff, which is true. But I think they had a plan for it, right? They have this Nyx, which is very good against the Darkseer. They can go for this Doom straight away as an answer to the Darkseer as well. And although the Laning Sage didn't go that well for them against that hero, it feels like their game plan overall is still okay. You know, Darkseer, one of the best Doom targets in the game. So what does that force you think from IG in this situation against this Darkseer? Like, are there any specific builds you're going to be going for on any of these heroes? Is he always the Doom target for JT? Yeah, I mean, the problem is if you don't Doom the Darkseer, he just surges them away. Right. So I think he has to be the main Doom target every fight. But then it's also a little bit difficult because they have the Wyvern save as well, potentially. So, there's, you know, there is lots to think about. Is War Stomp the spell that you want to stick with, though? Or do you think you might want to be going to something else instead of War Stomp come later in the game? If you can't I mean, do you the Dark Seer. You can get the Purge Creep as well. It's pretty good. Um, but it, it's not easy to find because there's only, you know, one small camp on either side. Basically, well, two, I guess. Radiant's from the mid lane as well. But. Is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. If he could get that, I would say it's almost worth maybe doing another target if he's got the Purge spell, right? So... It, it, yeah, it's but the tough. thing is with with the purge as well. It's not even just about the iron shell and the surge. It takes off in power as well, right? Yeah, which is which is really good this game. Shot ended up missing over bottom. I mean, often though, a lot of the times the the, I mean, the, the stun duration is more value anyway, right? But we'll see how it goes. I mean. We've seen Lunar Doom cause already this tournament, and it hits this point in the game where it starts to slow down, and they just they just outpower farm you. Right? Like the Lunar with the Glaives, the Doom with the uh, Devour. I don't think does Doom have Midas. I didn't check, but he's going for it. Or at least yeah, last I, I checked, he was going for it. and He's almost got it. He's in exactly the fastest Doom game. He's not at the top of the net worth, but he will jump up there with that Midas, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Once you get those items online, you're quite happy taking this slow tempo. It's chilling out a little bit. Pink Dagger for the Magnus. I will say, I think the Mag 3 hasn't looked fantastic this tournament. And in general, I don't think Mag's looked amazing. But that hero is still, you know, very good. Hmm? Sharpshooter misses. RP? Is this a kill? I don't think so. I mean, they lost vision, so. Oh, good. Uh, push rock dodge. Oh, the clip's coming down on XCJ. He's in trouble. Winter's curse, but the kill's still there for Kaka. Yeah, big kill. And now they can look to push this top, uh, bot tier one as well. I uh, very much doubt SAG will be looking to, to come down and defend this. Luna Blessing is such a crazy ability, by the way. Like, the fact that you just get a thousand night vision. That is a of lot that. of night vision, too. Uh, on top of the bonus damage that you get for your whole team, is is so crazy to me. I, I really think that's going to get nerfed, that vision aspect of the skill. And even if you just, like, tweak the numbers a little bit. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Easy. Easy stun. It just feels like a thousand is so much. Like, it doesn't need to be that high. And that's the thing, right? A lot of the time when the Lunar players, even if they're free farming jungle, they don't max Glaives because the max blessing feels so good and it helps you, like, see if people are coming to gank you and things during that first night time. Remnant. Locking up ZYD and... Well, Emo grabs that double damage. He's going to get the Arcane. Oh. Yeah, he had the DD from before still. Like, this game was so close, like, two minutes ago in net worth, right? And all of a sudden, it's a 5k net worth lead for the Dyer. With a good leaning stage from SAG. Hook shot. Sharpshooter used. That's going to break the clockwork. They've got the Aether into lockdown on Goku, and with that... Double damage and the arcane rune. Emo's got an opportunity to kind of do a lot. Assimilates, still runs. Bushwhack hits on AMS. 
who's the next assassin? But they get the kill in the darks here. Yeah, I love the I love the get down, Mr. President play from the clockwork though. Just tanks the bullet. Radiance Ooh, did they? Yeah, they must have caught that, right? Yeah, I think so. Blue must have caught that right? smoke. Yeah. That's a shame. Luna's so far out of position, but they can't punish her. Feels really bad. And you you have to worry for this SAG side that, you know, their cores don't scale massively well. So if they're 6k behind at 15 minutes into the game, it, it's not looking great for them. It's not going to just get easier for them with time. They need to win fights. Yeah. And they are trying to take fights like that skirmish bot just then, right? But... Yeah, the Emo gets away and the Lunar and the Doom are just farming the whole time. They're just falling further and further behind. He did use the smoke and MS. He's going to break it, walk him forward. But I don't know if Emo's really that scared. He's got the Aether Remnant with a Assimilate, the Bushwhack thrown forward. Kaka, Sharpshooter, Cold Ooh. Embrace. And, oh, Winter's Curse. They had the Sentry down, which they should have remembered with the Sentry being taken out before. There's two Sentries down, and Ollie's going to die here to MS. Ollie just tried to go for the Vendetta hit to yeah. finish off the mag, but... Tunnel Vision it forces the one. Well, it, it's fine, right? Because it still forces out the curse and whatnot. Forces out hook shots, so it could be worse. It's not like it's the end of the world. Oh! Lucent Beam, MS. Oh, He's going to go down to Fly Fly, getting caught. Radiance bottom tower that's a big kill, that one. A lot of XP to the Lunar as well. A lot of experience going the way of Fly Fly. Who is very close to a BKB. He may not feel comfortable fighting 5 on 5 at the moment, but he gets that BKB and he'll be ready to go. Yeah, are they going 4 staffs on the die side at all as well? Doesn't look like they've got any. Kaka's yet, going for the 4 staff. Um, but he's on only the, got the uh, fluffy hat. Right, okay, okay. Because obviously, against the clock and the uh, razor, it has a lot of value. I believe Nyx Assassin's building one too. Nick Assassin. Spike Carapace impale. Now Ollie is in trouble and dead. ZYD getting credit for that. Yeah, they've got the Razor BKB now, so they want to use this timing uh, on SAG. Try and force this down. Grove both for the Luna every time. <laughs> nice. I feel like I, I've said Grove by Luna a lot of times this tournament. It's like Chip Vest Axe. Yeah. Every single time. Okay, so Ollie actually switches off poor staff and now will commit to going to the Yules. But Kaka still looking for staff. Yeah, I think the, the Nyx Yules is still really good though as well because you still get that purge, right? Which is nice. Sets up for the stun really well. And it's kind of a pseudo force in the sense that if the Razor tries to link, he can just use him up in the air if he's not bkb would that being said, Razor does have a 9 second BKB ready to go. Luna's so going, Luna. uh, Luna's going Hurricane Pike. Oh, Grove Bow. And yeah, I, I don't mind the Hurricane Pike. This game, like we said, the Force has a huge amount of value. And especially against the Razor, you know you're going to be the one that gets linked a lot of the time. So having your own Force staff is really, um, really big. Nyx Assassin moving forward. ZYD. He's spotted by Ollie. They just don't have a sentry in a spot where they could have seen this Nyx Assassin. Bushwhack and the damage coming through on a white horse. But Ollie's going to die to the Winter's Curse. That comes through the vacuum into the wall. That's going to land on a Fly Fly as well as JT. It's the wall that lands on a Fly Fly. The vacuum also pulls JT back in. And MS, who was looking for an RP, actually stops it in time. And into the air goes White Horse. He's in trouble. Eclipse used. They'll get the second kill as he bought back already. So he's in for another 54 seconds. Killing spree for Fly Fly and a 9k lead for IG overall. And right after that, Fly Fly just TPs towards top and gets out, gets out of there to farm. Yeah. Oh, Mitch. All right. They'll find Emo. Good kill. But now without the RP, what can they force, right? 
I mean, I don't have Beaky Beasts, so they're not looking in great fighting shape themselves either. I think they're kind of okay with Luna finishing off this four staff. Yeah, I think so. And they get the tier one, though, on SAG, which is really good. So, good pick off for them. I mean, for the, that other fight, though, when the clock dies, it's really hard for the Radiant to, like, find their entry, right? The mag blinks in to try to find the, the RP, but it didn't really feel great. At least it gets the Luna BKB force. Right. But, yeah. Did you start to chip away at this lead, though? What was once a 9k is a 7k. What's funny is the Doom's 0-4-4, right? Like, it's not even like he's having the most okay. amazing Doom game. He's just been farming the whole time. Yeah. With this Midas, with Devour. And look at his net worth, you know? Who cares, Lane? I win game. Now you just need that vision, and then you'll definitely win game. Because vision win game. No shard yet for Fly Fly. Probably. I, I mean, I'll assume it's next. What surge is this? IG smoked up, and Sun Goku will be spotted. Link with the Infernal Blade. They've got the Bushwhack Sharpshooter not even needed. It does get shot the way of Sun Goku, but they get the kill, and it's all who gets credit for that one. Yeah, they didn't even need to commit the Doom either. So, question is here, you know, do they look for the top tier one? Do they... I think it's a little bit early for Roche. The lineup doesn't really take it that well. They could go, I guess, but... They could just force going for this tier two tower top. Yeah, they could. For sure. I think with the Darkseer dead, like we've said, he's such a key hero for this game. That it's difficult to defend without him. They put some pressure on for a second. Ooh, clockwork. Winter's Curse, MS. He has RP. He'll use it. That's on three. Skewer back out of the hands of Flyfly, who's trying to help out. They use that hook shot. They get the kill, though, on a white horse. And they've got the static link coming up from Zero2 with the BKB being popped. They get the kill on MS. They'll take out JT. So Doom's dead, but the right quick's coming in from Flyfly. He's really not oh, been stopped in this fight. Oh, the sharpshooter. XCJ goes down. Emo gets the kill. Ollie ends up dead, and they still take out ZYD. <laughs> Kaka survives with a sliver of health. And Darkseer, not going to be next as Emo didn't have an Aether Remnant to follow up on that Yules, but they do come out ahead on that one, a four for two. What I love is that the Razor basically ignored the RP and ran into Link the Lunar at the same time. If you watch back, and the yeah, Lunar so got the replay care. here. Yeah. She just carried on hitting any watch. Like, so the RP goes, and then Razor just walks past and Link's the Lunar, and Lunar just carries on hitting anyway he doesn't care and then five five for a duration of that wanted to tp out yeah. he started to he... tp there it's just so crazy that you know fly is able to just get linked the whole fight and they still just win the fight because on the rp there's no follow-up damage like they've used curse already they've used rp the dark Sid wasn't quite in the fight yet because i think he was respawning so the rp just basically doesn't do anything yeah despite it being a good rp on three but that's the setup that you get from the winter's curse right so you're using curse to set up another lockdown spell and then you don't have much lockdown to give afterwards but that's just the problem with the damage output if the dark is not alive right we're killing so ms much, i think are they gonna oh they want the two on bit okay i didn't even realize they're still they, there i think they can do both yeah they, they can do both for sure question is do they want to and you see the way that oh, they're they posturing they want to play aggressively emo goes in hook shot all right hits the dark seer probably not the target you were going for with the bkb be popped by jt now he's going to be hit with that static link Yules though used by ollie and that'll keep zyd away they get the kill to sun goku they will go for a five fight with the bkb be popped by this luna now turning the damage out onto the razor uh, they've got the stun. They'll get the lockdown and the kill on a white horse three heroes dead on the side of sag as ig still come out unscathed and that's wall down, so wall used, not really getting them anything, and they'll take the mid tower too. This is turning into objective, into objective, into objective, where IG aren't really being stopped at all, and they're not faltering, going for each one. What's the Luna have coming out, Macaria? Because uh, crystals. I feel like... Right. Okay. This is. 
the laning stage wasn't clean for my G, and I will say that. And I think that's one of the things that if you're going to look further into this than the moment you're in right now, it's something to look towards going later into this. It's not only this series, but, uh, you know, the next one that they have. But from a certain point, I actually have looked really crisp. Yeah, they've looked really good. But I, I think it's so much easier for them to take their fights. And they're always finding the initiation, it feels like, as well. Right. Clockwork's just farming for the darks here. This is proper support gameplay. What do I do now? You stand there. Yeah. Just b make sure my iron shell is close enough. Oh, okay. Blink Infernal Blade with the Lucent Beam and White Horse. Hook shot won't matter. Did you see from Ollie though? Yeah. Ollie and Emo, they, they know he's dead and they just look for more straight away. XCJ. They didn't even find XCJ. Oh, he's gone. Wow. Emo not checking the wand. And they're going to go rage though. Are they? I think you do, right? You definitely can. Yeah, they're going. Fourteen K lead. Have the damage. You've got this chrysalis on five fly. You can get in there and take yourself the Aegis. Oh, they're gonna go! Oh, Look at the RP into the vacuum wall! On a four on both! That's a kill on an emo. They've got the winter's curse to follow it up. They're gonna try and get the kill here on a fly fly. Can they even kill fly fly? Yes, they can. Oh. They'll take out Kaka. Thanks for doing all the work. We'll take Roche. Wow. Four heroes gone and SAG swipe it and then some. Wow. Incredible. I mean, great initiation by Son Goku. Finally, you know, SAG, they find the initiation into the fight themselves this time. They're the first ones to make the move. And what a move it was. Now, let's see it I again. Mean, this is what we were saying, though, about the Dyer side. They don't take Roche particularly quickly. So although they really want to take it, it's it's quite slow. And it gives SAG time to get to the pit. I also think it was slow, but it was only be more so because there was the non-committal. Yeah. You had just Fi-Fi in there for a good chunk of it, and then you finally bring in JT, but... And because they were spent, they killed the clock, right? And then do you remember they spent time trying to chase the other heroes as well? Yeah. Whereas maybe if they just moved into the pit straight away, they could have killed it. It's difficult to know, you know, in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, but 50 50 win probability now, apparently, to Gaben. They cut the net worth lead by a lot. Top tower yeah. This, this Doom does have 4k net worth spare, so he's, uh, he's getting to that Shivas here. Man, just what a, what a play. Really impressed by that. And that comes from the fact that they've got this blink dagger, the Ag's on the Dark Seer, so he's able to blink BKB and get in there with a four-man vacuum wall immediately followed up by a four-man RP. You have to remember, though, that's the perfect case scenario for SAG. I mean, if they hit that combo ever again this game, I'd be surprised. And th like that, that's genuinely the best thing that could have happened. Ali? Looking at Son Goku, Kaka here, and there's the impale. Not going for the vendetta shot. Do they have the damage to get the kill before the rest of the team comes in? Yes, they do. Sharpshooter, Kaka kill. Uh, no buyback as well. Uh, so. XCJ? Infernal Blade, Bushwhack. He's got. Oh, he's got. He's got really early shard on JT, I think. On the Doom. Oh, it's oh, all falling apart. Dear. There's the Doom. MS is gone. You give it right back. What's that 50-50 at now? Radiant's bottom tower <laughs> is under attack. I honestly think they can force this high ground until the mag buys back. They obviously need to be wary about this Wyvern when he comes back alive, but you know, who cares about the Aegis when there's three heroes dead? They have a ward down, set up and ready. Radiant's bottom tower. The power of Luna. Here it comes. Only when you get on the racks. I know. That's why I said here it comes. As in in the future. This race is fine before the rest of the team's up. Yeah, hookshot used cogs. All right, well, not the best hookshot cogs combo 
They're ever the was, but they've got the wall down. Ollie on the run ends up dead, and Emo getting some space between him and the side of SAG. Bushwhack, sharpshooter, maybe too far. Spear Vessel, yeah, he's, he's gone. That's the first life, and the rest of the team is still running. They don't have hookshot to catch up. Yeah, you have to be so careful now, though, because you know he doesn't have that second life. I mean, great fight for IG overall. Yes, they don't take the, the buildings, they don't take the racks, but... You know, they get, they get the Aegis out off of the Razor. They only really lose the Nyx, which is fine. Oh, and now the game's kind of back to where it was again before the Roche. Just about. Was 14k before that point. Now you've got a Daedalus on Flyfly, and we've seen the damage output he can have. Got everybody up for SAG. We'll see if they can pull off the perfect combo again. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure this Doom has a really early shard. Do you remember we talked about this last game, how Nothing to Say didn't get it before on the mm -hmm. Doom until like he basically five or six slide. And when they were chasing the Wyvern, he was level 15, which I know NA maths is a bit difficult, Beacot, but it is a multiple of three. Uh... So yeah, he got, he got stunned for the extra duration. I, I don't do know what know, that math and uh, no, pff, yeah, go for it. Do you want to know a Mo Farah top tip, B Cop? Sure. Do you want to know how to know if something's a multiple of three? Sure. Right. You, uh, if it's like twenty-seven, for example, you add the two and the seven together, makes nine, which is a multiple of three. So. Emo getting the kill there on XCJ and uh, Mo Farah teaching some North Easy. American Common Core math. <laughs> I'm just, I'm here to help the people, you know? It's true. Invisibility. Now back to that 12k lead. Smoke use here from SAG. They're going to try and make something happen. Uh, is they're going to move forward, potentially uh, off the back of a hook shot that misses. But now the bushwhack comes through. Son Goku vacuum wall into the RP once again. They're trying to get the kill on a wow. five-five. They'll take out Ollie and five-five will follow suit into the grave. Despite the botch on the hook shot, SAG still make it work. And that is no five-five for 90 seconds. Yeah, I mean, SAG, SAG completely set up and ready and IG definitely not. Again, it's all about all about who gets the jump first. SCG, they find this RP, instantly two heroes dead. Oh, he must cutting the mid wave. Oh. Normal punch. That jet MS. So Hook shot. Nicely done there by Whitehorse. Cog skewer into the rest of the team. He gets a two man stun coming through, but he's hit with that static link. He's trying to run. He's trying to hide, but he can't do so. And jetpack's always fun to watch. Ooh, they're going after Emo now. They're going across the board, trying to get these pickoffs. Yeah. Uh, trying to get as most out of the uh, the time that the Lunar's dead, right? They wanted to be able to push mid, but with Emo cutting the wave, kind of takes that out of the equation. Another maths word, B cup, sorry. Mm -hmm. I hate learning. Jesus. Equation. Soon you're going to be start starting Ooh, to talk about shot. long division. Hook shot coming through over mid on Akaka. Did he not have... Oh, he didn't have mana for cogs. Uh... Ali. Stunning MS. Kaka can't exactly fight into this. Vacuum into the wall. That's not what they really wanted to do. But DYD is going to go in with the BKB on the other side of the fight. They've got Emo making something happen. They get the kill on Akaka. They'll take out Ali. Full support. Stand on the side of IG. Double kill for ZYD, who is now dominating. It feels like they're just they're bleeding kills. They haven't been five alive for ages on IG now. Yeah, five like alive last... in together. That's for sure. Oh, he's sitting under a ward on Emo as well. Oh, they got him. RP. And Emo get out of this. Is he that good? We'll go to the Dissimilate who Astral step back behind the tier 2 tower. 
They don't have hook shots, so they cannot follow that up. However, Roche only 13 seconds away. Is Emo good enough to escape on voice for it? Can he roll his forehead across the keyboard? <laughs> what a hero. <sighs> I need to learn my forehead you rolling. Just, are you just, you run your forehead across the keyboard and you're halfway across the map on Void Spirit. It's just the way it goes. Especially with Shard. Okay. <laughs> See if I can put that together one of these days. <laughs> Next time I open up your stream, you're just smashing your forehead against the keyboard. I'm excited. I just did it before. I don't know if production saw me just like lean my head forward, but that was me rolling my <laughs> head on the keyboard. <laughs> this was once a 14k lead and then back down to an 8k, back up to an 11, 12k, and now back down to 5k. Yeah, it's because they bled so many kills though, right? Yeah. All in a row. I would say when the Void Spirit gets level 25, I think the game gets a lot more interesting for IG. Because having that Dissimilate stun is... Uh, yeah, it's really strong. And Emo is really proficient on this hero, but we don't see Void Spirit that much. No, not at all. Yeah, he's kind of fallen off as a mid-choice. We sometimes see it a little bit more against Puck, right? Because you can have the Yules into the Aether Remnant. So it's kind of like good hard catch, but it goes both ways because the Coil against the Void Spirit is really good as well. Mm -hmm. And did he just take the time? I think he, he did. He did, yeah. he did. I was watching that because I was just about to mention it because you were talking about how you really want him to get to 25 and they're pushing that issue. They really want him to get to 25 and that's why he's split pushing too, right? He's by himself trying to get solo experience, clean up these waves and get to level 25. Second Roche has been alive for a while and neither team has really shown the urgency to want to go and get it. Hook shot, cogs. Ooh, bushwhack on the jetpack. Clockwork and the double four staff. Ollie, he escapes. Yeah, and I, I I really think the tier four items this game are going to mean a huge amount because like if you get something like a spell prism on the void spirit, his game completely changes with how much like he can do in fights. And there's a refresher on the razor. Now, I know like Envy and some other players when they played razor, they'd go for like this BKB refresher build. Obviously, the razor stopped off for an SMY and a Shivas before this time, but the refresher is so strong on this hero. Ever since they changed the BKB minimum duration for five to six seconds. When you get refresher now, you're effectively getting an extra two seconds of BKB, right? Um, and you get the double eye of the Ooh. storm as well. It feels incredible. Now you're gonna go to the hook shot. They're coming around. They're looking for something. Some Goku. He pops the BKB. They've done themselves the impale as well as the sharpshooter. That's gonna get the kill on a white horse. Emo behind them. The doom out onto the Magnus. He's hit with the Aether Remnant. They've got the control. They get the kill on an MS and ZYD trying to make something happen. The Aeon just gets popped on Son Goku. They'll pop the refresher. They'll go back to the BKB on ZYD, but he does not want to commit to this. Four staffs forward, trying to catch up to the razor, the and they just cannot close ground. Great initiation by JT, though. Radiant Finds the mag in the backline. I thought he was going to do the darks here, but taking the RP out of the fight. And there's the spell prism, baby. Emo. His game just here got go. pumped up, and he just hit level 25. Yeah, it's, and it's he didn't, really he didn't take the dissimilate stun. He took the crit, did he? Yeah, he took the 160% crit. Oh, interesting. I love how that, uh, you know, he hypes the things up as casters so much. And then they just they just don't happen anyway. Yeah, I just kind of say words, try not to guess. Cool. And having the Aegis up against this big RP, which has been their like massive problem on IG, all of a sudden, you know, you don't have two RPs available, but the Luna has oh. two lives. Are they really doing this right now? What? Ugh. I, I say uh, just because I hate it. <laughs> They've given the shard of, to all people the hoodwink. I think everybody else probably has one, right? I mean, the Nyxis isn't that great. Nyx doesn't have one. I guess, yeah, the choices are are slim. I would have the Nyxes over the decoy. I, I just think decoy is so bad. Yeah, but the Nyx one's pretty awful as well. It's like Nyx or hoodwink. Oh, great. They which turns the shiniest. <laughs> Timeless Relic for IG. That's a really good Doom item. They could probably give it to Nyx as well. I think it would be really great. I like the spider legs on Doom. That's for sure. Oh, 
Sharpshooter misses as SAG are leaving the base and wrapping around. They're wrapping, but they're not committing completely. Spell Prism and Octarine Core. So, Ether Remnant on a nine second cooldown. <laughs> What's the Astral Step cooldown? Uh, charge Restore Time is 18 seconds. Oh, good, good. Resident Impulse is... I think that's without the Octarine, though, and the Spell Prism, I'm pretty sure. Not sure. I don't think the, the tooltip changes, basically. Dyer are scanning. Because that would be... I mean, tooltips in Dota are historically one of the, the greatest things. Oh, he just goes in. Yeah, Astral Step. We're going to win the Aether and he gets the silence out of the Dark Series as well as the Winter Wyvern. The Sharpshooter comes in and Sun Goku is still just standing here waiting for somebody to come over and go into the vacuum wall. And it's going to be Flyfly taking a lot of damage and he'll link over towards the Luna. They go over and get a kill out on a white horse. Fly fight with Eclipse down. MS is going to pop the BKB. They've got the Inferno Blade that hits onto the Darkseer. And now, popping the Aeon Disc for the Doom. It's out onto the Magnus. They also Doom this Darkseer. He dooms himself, but I don't think he really cares about that. The Lucid Beacon comes through onto the Darkseer. They get the kill on the Sun Goku. Is Mag dying? Except for 82 seconds. Close. Mag. Oh. Just in. A Wyvern Ball back. Yeah, Wyvern Ball back and dies to Emo. I mean, that DD on the Void Spirit just went to town there on the Wyvern at the end. <laughs> With the crit talent at 25. The obvious choice. Yeah, yeah. Get straight through him. Anybody who thinks otherwise is uh, questionable. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be pretty dumb, wouldn't it? A normal punch. Oh but my now they goodness. turn it around. The damage coming in on the MS. It's the normal punch, but then the Nani coming in from IG to turn it around. Just rip apart MS. Every time you normal punch, it should be like lore that you have to use the Arkosh voice line as well. Yeah, exactly. And without the um, the Wyvern here, the fight's going to be really difficult. The Mag has buyback, and he still has RP, but the Luna has Aegis, right? So. Ancient exposed, fly fly low, Aegis goes down on the normal punch. They pop the BKB on ZYD. They've got the static link on a JT, the Lotus Orb, trying oh, to keep silence. ZYD safe. Flyfly Fly outputting some damage on the MS. Hookshot comes in and across Flyfly. Fly. They still have the RP. Normal punch once again. They've got the dissimilar right on top of the RP. It's on a Flyfly. Fly. The damage from the illusion is going to be enough. Yes, it will be. Flyfly Fly dead for 99 seconds. But the Aether Remnant hits and the dissimilate is away from Emo. Yules up into the air. Sun Goku trying to catch up to this Void Spirit. Dissimilate once again. He's got a lot of options to choose from. Goes to the high ground. Gets the silence. Astral Step. Aether Remnant oh locking God. down ZYD. Shockwave not going to hit, and he'll go to the other side over to the mid lane, but they've got the Winter's Curse that lands onto the Nyx Assassin, and the normal punch comes up from Zunkoku, and Emo still able to Astral Step away. Ollie, four staff, vacuum back on the two, the Shockwave hits, hits on the top guy, takes out his life, and they'll kill off Ollie. Radiant's top I, I legitimately, it feels like Emo doesn't have any cooldown on his spells. That was, that was ridiculous. Um, there was a really cool play that fight where the Magnus um, was trying to set up for the Luna um, on the like on the Aegis respawn, mm -hmm. and the Emo just jumped in and caught him with the edge of the silence just before the RP could come through. And they're gonna try and force this mid. They, they're gonna try and get the Luna buyback here. I think the both the supports are gonna have to buy back at least. Ah, oh, we'll see. Astral stuff. Aether Remnant pulled Embrace to heal up MS. They don't push that fast in comparison, right? Like the Mac just decent War stop, damage, Doom out on the Razor, and now in trouble. And Emo's going in. He's going to use that to simulate to be right on top of ZYD. They'll get the kill on the Razor. He's going to be dead for 100 seconds. They've got the Doom out on MS as well. They get the kill on the XEJ. It's going to be two dead now. Make it a third. Unstoppable for JT. Dominating for Emo. And three heroes, no buyback on the side of SAG. Oh. An Arcane Rune. <laughs> That's the O? An Arcane Rune? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, honestly, I, I mean, they're just going to run down mid, right? They know there's no buyback on the mag in particular, which is the, the huge one. Oh, he got the cleave talent on Doom. Let's go. It's the only talent you should be getting. Oh, well. BKB pop by Son Goku. 
Simulate back and now sending out that decoy. Very obvious and real hoodwink there. Bushwhack top of the Aeon disc, but now they've got the Lotus Orb and the Yule's up into the air. They've caught themselves a clockwork and he's trying to jetpack back into the base, but he won't be able to do so. White Horse dies, so does Son Goku. Full team white for IG and game one going their way. Again, this felt like the LGD um, Asteria series before, but there was so much back and forth at different points in the game. You know, we had a lot of um, yeah back and forth team fights and things, especially around that first Roche. Yeah. SAG, you have to remember, they were uh, so far behind before yeah. that first Roche went their way. And the game could have looked a lot different otherwise. So they kept themselves in it for long periods. But yeah, eventually this uh, IG, the three cores, they feel much stronger and they, they find some really key jumps. Um, yeah, well played to them. Looking forward to game two, though. Yeah, I guess the only question is, was it more 